Hey, it's Tim here. Tableau have just announced Tableau GPT. And um, in this uh, keynote roundup I recently just launched, I explained that Tableau had to talk about GPT and AI technology because every single company is talking about it. Let's find out more and get into it. Let's get stuck. In. So Tableau had to talk about AI. There's just no getting around it. Every single company that's invested in the technology space has to be talking about AI capabilities. Um, AI has just mothballed through every single technology company. And although they're all still trying to figure out how it works or the different ways, um, the general consensus, and I'm not sure I'm totally in line with this, but the general consensus is every company thinks there's a way they can use this technology to enhance their products. And so what Tableau had to do is actually highlight the fact that they're not just jumping on this bandwagon. In fact, Tableau has been, and I've done a few videos already showing you how Tableau's already been using AI technology in all of their tools. And so this was a really sort of good way to set this up because they then announced something called Tableau GPT. Now, GPT stands for generative, uh, I can never remember this, generative something transformer. Uh, we're gonna have to literally come out of this recording. Generative pre-trained transformer. Okay, cool. Now GPT stands for generative bleh, generative pre-trained transformer. I had to literally go away and Google that because I forget it every single time. But that technology was actually invented by Google some time ago. And we've actually had multiple versions of GPT. You might have heard of ChatGPT version 4, which is based on GPT-4 technology. Well, GPT-1, 2, and 3 have all come before it. You might have been familiar with GPT-3.5, which is what OpenAI introduced alongside ChatGPT. So what it essentially means is that Tableau themselves have been building a large language model that not only understands the kind of terminology that we might use with its product, but also will better understand analytical context within organizations. And so this technology is going to be an underlying layer throughout their platform. If I sort of just jump ahead a little bit, you can see there's this sort of graphic, and I think this graphic explains it really well. Um, large language models and AI technology really do have to work across the platform because they need to sort of have a, a hook into lots of different metadata sources in order to really understand what people might ask. And then throughout the keynote, we saw different examples of how this works. The first example was obviously just going into the search bar and asking a simple question about a metric, and we saw a response. The second one was in Tableau Pulse, a Tableau Pulse being this new place for metrics to live, a new way of building metrics metrics as well, not necessarily attached to data visualizations. And what we had there were prompts generated by Tableau GPT, essentially questions you could ask of the data source, but also you had a search box which could understand your queries, which could be relating directly to the data source, or you could even ask open-ended questions. For example, what else should I know about this particular product? They actually did a demo and showed us an example of that as well. The other place we saw it inside of uh, the product was inside of Tableau Prep. And I think this is the use case that really we are all familiar with because this is exactly what we've been using ChatGPT for. They showed an example where they went into Tableau Prep and they had a field of data and the field had emails contained within it. And I think it was a JSON object. It was it's a complicated sort of data format, but it was all stored in one column. And so what they were able to do is ask uh, Tableau GPT, hey, um, what regex can I use to extract the email? Or how can I extract the email from this uh, field? And it came back with a regex response. I don't think the user actually asked for regex. It just came back with it. And so that's another use case. So if you can imagine that inside of the calculation window inside of Tableau Desktop, you're trying to solve a problem, just being able to simply go to Tableau and say, hey, I'd like to write a calculation that looks back four months. That's a classic example, right? Even though Metrics now looks like it has the interface to build out for us, um, having this technology inside of Tableau GPT is going to be great. And you could argue it's probably been trained on data sets, for example, the knowledge base articles, the documentation that goes back many, many versions. You've got Tableau forums you've got uh, knowledge base uh, responses to specific known issues all of these are really super powerful sources for this kind of technology and if they've been training their technology correctly they can start to pair that with telemetry because of course telemetry tells them how people are using this alongside what's going on inside of tableau public which is another big source of telemetry for tableau pairing all of that together gives you something really rich the difficult thing, though, is making sure that when it gives you an answer, it's not only useful, but it has to be right. And this is sort of the tricky point here. It's all good and fine to get excited about this technology, 
But, and you all know this using ChatGPT, when it gets it wrong, it has the potential to get it wrong really, really badly. And in an analytical context, in the business context, that can sort of have issues. And so where this technology is great is, you know, what questions should I ask? You know, what should I look at? That kind of stuff, the kind of stuff to prompt you in a direction, move you in a direction, give you some starting points, give you some visual aids. That kind of stuff is totally fine. But when you start to go down the road where you're writing calculations with it, that's great. But you also want a little bit of documentation on that calculation so that you understand exactly what's going on in that regex. And as you get closer and closer to sort of mission critical parts of your analytical stack, you want to know that it's going to actually help you get the right queries, the right responses, and even things like giving you the performant calculations. We've now got capability in Tableau that can tell you what's performant and what's not. We want this technology to give you the sort of criteria to say, hey, write a performant calculation. Or in that example with regex, you get a response saying regex, but it then tells you these are the performance implications. Have you thought about pushing this capability further back into your data stack so you can do some a little bit of data modeling, engineering, whatever you want to call it, and get this as a field ready prepared inside of Tableau rather than doing this here? That's the kind of sort of intelligence you need, especially when you're running big analytical workflows. So I'm super excited about this technology. I can't wait to see more of what it can do, but it's still early days. We only got a real small glimpse of how it's working. I can't wait for the first release of this inside of what will probably be a tablet cloud, but nonetheless, I can't wait. Let's find out more. And until then, I'll catch you in the next video.